Hi, welcome back to Android and iOS apps for your WordPress blog. So now that we have our index.html, our app.js and our controller.js in place, we can go ahead and start creating our application. We can write all our application code in index.html. But this is good when we have an application that contains just one screen. But our application will be more than that. What we want to do is create an application that have multiple screens and the user can navigate between those screens using the navigation controls that we provide. For example, as soon as the application launches, user has a screen and that screen shows all the latest posts. Whenever a user taps on any of the posts, the post opens in detail on another screen. So you see what we are trying to do? Well, we are trying to navigate from one screen to another on a particular event. So we'll have to create those screens first and then we'll use our index.html as a placeholder for those screens. We'll load a particular screen inside our index.html as and when required. And whenever we need to load a different screen, we'll swap the screens in index.html. So how do we do that? First, let's just go ahead inside our www folder and create a new folder and call this as templates. Okay, templates is a folder that will contain the pieces of our UI that will inject in index.html on requirement. Okay, so our latest post screen will be a piece. Similarly, our post detail screen will also be a piece and we will swipe these pieces with each other as and when required. So let's just go ahead and index.html and create a few files. So first I'm gonna create a file and I'm gonna save it as menu. Dot HTML. So this file will contain a menu that will help the user to navigate from one page to another. Second, I'll create another page and I'll call this as menu content dot HTML. Okay, this will contain the content of our main screen. Third, I will create another screen and I'll save it as post detail dot HTML. The names are self explanatory. The menu.html will contain our menu. We are going to create a side menu. You can see how a side menu looks. So what we are trying to build is something like this. So we'll have a menu on the left and whenever we swipe to the right, our menu will show up. And whenever we swipe to the left, our main content will show up. So we have our menu.html for the menu, which is hidden on the left. The content on the screen, which gets shifted to the right whenever we open the menu, will be stored in menu content.html. PostDetail.html is another page which will contain the content of a particular post that we want to see in detail. Okay, so these are pretty much all the pages that we are going to create for now. Now let's go to our app.js file. All we need to do is create respective states so that we can navigate from one page to another. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the UI router, which is provided by Angular UI and is included with Ionic. So we do not need to include UI router or Angular UI in our project. We have Ionic included right here. So we have access to the UI router. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type in some code here. I'm going to type in the config block of our module and this config block will be a function and it will take two parameters. The first parameter is state provider and the second parameter is URL router provider. Okay. And this will be a function. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to create some states. States will be the encapsulation of a particular screen. So for example, let's take menu.html. So menu.html will contain some UI and will also contain some backend code. So we'll encapsulate both the things, the UI and the backend code in a particular state. And we will navigate to that state as and when required. Similarly, let's consider postdetails.html. That file will contain the UI code, the HTML code for that screen. And also some backend JavaScript code will be required. So we'll encapsulate that HTML code and the JavaScript code and we'll bind it together and create a new state and we'll navigate to that state as and when required. 
So let's just go ahead and create states and then you will know what we are trying to do. So let's go to state provider and we'll use the dot state method to create a new state. Okay. And now we are supposed to provide it the name of the state which we'll call main and along with it we are supposed to provide a number of properties. All these properties are passed as a JSON object. So I'm just going to use curly braces and within the curly braces I'm going to specify the URL. Okay. So this will be the URL that we can see in the address bar but in a mobile application this URL is not visible. Your application navigates to this URL whenever you want to activate this particular state. Okay. So the first parameter is the URL and we have assigned it to main. The second parameter is a template URL. Okay. This will be the URL of the HTML file that we want to load whenever the user navigates to this particular state. Okay. So the URL of the template is templates slash menu dot HTML. Okay. So we are actually referring this file right here. Last but not the least, we need to specify the controller. So this will be the JavaScript component that we are binding together along with the UI and the controller is menu controller. Okay. All you need to do is specify a name of the controller. Likewise, I'm going to create two more states for our menu content and post detail. So I'm just going to paste in the code right here. And you can see that the code is pretty much the same except the fact that I have put a dot here and I have named the state as main dot content recent. This is because I have content recent as a state nested within the main state. Similarly, I have post detail a state nested within the main state. So content recent and post detail states are within the main state. The main state is the parent state while these two states are the child states. Okay. Other than that, we have a URL, we have a template URL and we have a controller. You can see that for the main state and the main dot content recent state, we have the same controller. You can use different controllers, but for the sake of simplicity, we have specified the same controller because these two states will be visible on the same screen. This state will be the side menu while this state will be the content on the screen except that side menu. Okay. So finally, we need to specify a default case that will get executed if the user navigates to any URL other than the specified ones. If the user specifies the random URL, then the user will be taken to this case and this will be URL router provider dot otherwise. And here I'll specify the URL of a state that the user will be taken to if they try to navigate to any other state the user should be taken to content recent state if none of the three states match. Okay. So this is how it's done. Now all we need to do is create these two controllers, menu controller and post controller in our controllers.js and also we need to modify the code in our index.html a bit. So I'm just going to remove this iron pane and because we want to use our index.html as a container which will hold the templates. We have to remove all the code inside our body tag and I'm just going to use ion nav view. And ion nav view is the tag that will contain the content of the templates as and when required. So I'll just save it. Now let's head back to controllers.js and I'm just going to create controller so that no console errors occur and we can test our application. So we have a controller here, menu controller. So we'll just copy this code and we'll just paste it again. And we'll just change the name of this controller from menu controller to post controller. Okay. So we have just created the controllers, but we are not doing anything inside them. Now if we go back to the application, 
and inspect the console, you will notice that we do not have any errors. Also, we do not have any content. This is because all the templates are currently blank. So in the next video, we will start creating the UI of our application and start with the menu.html file.